I'm going to talk to you now about Newton's first law. This is also something important within forces and dynamics sort of uh, region of physics. Now Newton's got lots of different things he figured out, but um, this we're going to learn about Newton's first law and second law and third law. And later on we'll be doing things with Newton's universal law of gravitation. Those are the main sort of high school physics things that one might want to look at. So maybe we should state it in some ways. Now there's lots of different ways that I've seen it stated, and uh, there's lots of different interpretations. So I'm just going to give you a generic form, but it'll still be quite accurate. So I'll say um, a, a body, and we'll say here um, remains at rest, or in, we're going to say uniform, which means the same. So uniform motion. When I say uniform motion, I'm going to mean a straight line. Unless, I'm going to put a comma here. So a body wants to stay at rest, or it wants to stay in uniform motion, in other words, a straight line motion, unless it is acted upon by an external unbalanced force. That's going to be sort of a definition we can use. And you might have heard some people like to say an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted on by an external unbalanced force. And an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an external unbalanced force. Rather than write two sentences, I'm just trying to combine them into one. So maybe we should do something like uh, what it means. So let's look at this. So what does this really mean for us? Maybe I'll write it in black then this time. So if it's at rest, so let's say something is just still, and there's no unbalanced force. Uh, in other words, F net is zero. We were just looking at net forces before, or finding the resultant force. So if the resultant or net force is zero, then we can just say, well, um, that's actually pretty boring then, so it stays at rest. An example could be that world's most boring example where we just had this piece of wood, let's say, and a piece of, yeah, a piece of wood sitting on a table. It's going to have two forces acting on it. I mean, it's at rest to begin with, let's assume. And it'll have a downwards force and an upwards force. And if those two forces cancel each other out, we could say F net equals zero, so that means it will just remain at rest. That's like the first one. An object remains at rest unless it's acted on by an external unbalanced force, which means I could make it not be at rest if all of a sudden I apply a force to the left. With no force to the right, it's going to then start accelerating to the left. Now, it can also, however, be in uniform motion, so we could maybe have that as an example. So that was one. So a second one could be that, uh, let's say, it's if it's moving, because it could actually be moving, um, it keeps moving in a straight line. So we could have a, an example of this, so as long as, so as long Oops, I need some more room here. Maybe I'll just write it like this again. So I'll say as long as F net equals zero. So as long as the net force or the resultant force equals zero, then it'll keep moving in a straight line. So we could consider all sorts of examples. Um, one could actually be, this is I think a really good one. Let's say we have a top view of something that's spinning around. So let's say I'm standing here. It's going to be a little bit hard to see, but let's just say I'm standing. This is a top view of me. This is my head, and these are my arms here. This is like my hand here. This is my hand. Well, it actually doesn't at all. This looks really weird, but this is assuming this is a top view. It's like a camera over above my head, so you can see just my nose sticking out, and I guess that's it. Um, so if I'm considering this right here, 
then what I could be doing is at the end of a, maybe I have a rope or something like that. And may, so maybe I'm holding some sort of rope here and at the end of it I have some sort of mass. And that thing that I'm sort of swinging it above my head so it's going in a, well, assuming I could draw circles really well. That was a really lousy circle. Let me just try that again. Let's just assume that I have this thing here and I'm going to try to draw a nice round circle. Sort of like this. So let's assume it's going around, you know, this way, let's say. So it's going around this way, and it's going around that way, it's going around that way, and it goes around this way. As it's going around a circle, what could happen? It doesn't matter what this is. This could be like a ball at the end of a string here. And I'm just whipping it above my head like this. Well, then what I could do is, what if I just cut this rope? So what if all of a sudden, I mean, right now, there is an external unbalanced force. It turns out the, the net force is not zero. There is a net force here. So as it's going around in a circle, what if all of a sudden I either let go of this thing or someone just cuts the rope? The question is, which direction will this thing keep going? Let's say I cut it right here when it's at exactly this position. Do you think it will go, mm, let's see here, let's say, do you think it'll go like this? Maybe that's A. Or will it go like this, which is B. Or will it go like this, which is C. Give it some thought right now. This is a conceptual question. In other words, so will it keep, will it sort of curve to the left? Will it go in a straight line? Or will it sort of curve to the right? Think about it carefully right now. Try to think about what you think it will do. By the way, I didn't really do a very good job of making that one look straight, but it's supposed to go curving left, straight line, or curving right. And if you're not sure, then just remember this rule here, that if something has no unbalanced force. In this case, as soon as I've cut it, there's no net force on it. So it's going to keep going in a uniform motion. In other words, a straight line. It turns out B is going to be correct. So once I cut it, it's going to go exactly in a straight line. That may seem counterintuitive. You might think it keeps curving, but it doesn't. If there's nothing to make it curve, it wants to go in a straight line. Same thing actually if you're flying around in space. You know, you might have seen movies, you know, where you see these spaceships and they're sort of curving left and right and stuff and flying around like airplanes do. That's not very realistic. What a spaceship really does is it just goes in a straight line and then it fires some thrusters to maybe, you know, maybe make it curve a little bit and then it'll go in a straight line again when those thrusters stop. It'll just go in a straight line. And maybe then they want to make it curve a little bit to left again. So they have to fire some thrusters and make it curve a little bit. And when they stop firing the thrusters, it goes in a straight line that way, let's say. Now, maybe it goes around and uses gravity to help it out to whip around and you know, sort of shoot at different places. That's what we really do as, uh, as humans uh, with satellites and things like this. But uh, in space, for example, things just want to go in a straight line unless you act on it, either with gravity or with little thrusters. But other than that, things in space just want to go in a straight line. So Newton's law works not only for, like I said, boring objects or things whipping around above your head, but also works with things out in outer space. It's kind of cool. So that's Newton's first law. It does a lot of really nice things for us. So we could actually consider a practical example of that. So let's maybe consider that here. So example. So for Newton's first law, we could say, um, well, why you should wear a seatbelt in a car. So why should you wear a seatbelt in a car? Well, let's say you have your car here. So actually, well, this could be a car, but it could be any sort of situation. But let's just say, so as you're driving around, let's say this is a big wall here, and you're driving in your car right here. So here we go, and you run into a wall. So I'm gonna just try to draw my little car here. Uh, I'm not really a very good artist, but oh well. So here's me driving in my car, and I'm about to run into this wall here. So I'm going sort of this direction right here, that's my speed. I'm about to go crunch. And what happens then is this. Um, if you're not strapped in, what happens is uh, your body wants to keep going in a straight line because of Newton's first law. So. So what happens is this, as you and your car 
I mean, you and the car are sort of your separate objects. If you're not strapped into it, then your car is one object. You happen to sit on it. But if your car, let's say, runs into a wall or I don't know, a telephone pole or whatever it is you're running into, then your car suddenly stops. But if you're not connected to your car, your body wants to keep going in a straight line. See, your body, your body wants to go in a straight line until it's acted on by an external unbalanced force. Now, if you're not strapped into your car, though, your body doesn't really know that the car stopped moving. So your body keeps moving. So even though the car stops, you'll keep going and you'll fly through the air. Maybe you go through the windshield or maybe you go splat into this thing. So that's not good for you. You definitely always want to wear your seatbelt. It also happens, same sort of situation, but with a bike. This happens at least in, uh, in Denmark, for example. Um, I've seen a few people actually, um, you know, if you're actually on your bicycle. Because everybody in Denmark seems to wear a, or seems to ride a bike, including me. That's just because, uh, well, it's really expensive to drive a car, so maybe that's why. So uh, we can consider actually a, uh, a bicycle like this right here. So maybe this is like the frame here. I've got my little seat here. Let's say I run into some sort of wall like this right here. Well, after I run into the wall, my bike stops, but I go flying through the air. I keep going. That's why if my bike sort of stops suddenly, I keep going if I'm not connected to my bike. So that's maybe pretty important. But I mean, we also have other examples too, like um, obviously boring examples like your moral's most boring object here. That if it's sitting like this right here, I mean, like we talked about before, if there's no unbalanced force here, so this boring object right here, it just stays still. So that's boring. But you can have things, so if you're moving and you're not strapped in, that's why you want to keep moving. Or if you're biking, let's say, and you hit a wall or something with your bike, well, your body keeps flying in a straight line. Of course, until you hit something or until, well, obviously gravity is going to be affecting you. You're not exactly going to go in a straight line. Turns out you're going to do a parabola. You're going to actually go like this and then go splat and hit the ground or hopefully you roll or something. So maybe it helps to wear a helmet then when you're biking in case this happens to you. So actually physics is all around us in everyday life. So that was sort of just a few examples of Newton's first law.